Screech by Taran MCT Read by Oak Shadow 5 Chapter 20 Izuku had been in a really good mood since he had gotten back home from his date the day before and had lasted well into the next. Denki had joined the group for lunch again and they sat next to each other. They even had hands under the lunch table while Izuku did his very best to imitate a strawberry. His good mood lasted well past when he got home. Most of the class had submitted their internship requests today and Denki was going to be going with Papa, just like he had suggested. And Izuku had successfully talked Momo out of going with Uwabami and was now going to be interning with Fatgum. Shota was going to be with his dad, and both Izuku and Hitoshi were of course going to be with Shota. The good mood killer was when he heard Shota muttering about Ida going to Hoso with Manuel and wondering if he was trying to get himself killed going after a serial killer. Izuku got up from where he was watching TV with Hitoshi and walked over to Shota and leaned up against him. Is Ida going to do something dumb? He asked quietly. Shota reached up and gently tucked at one of Izuku's curls. Eavesdropping isn't polite, Suzu. Izuku snorted. It's not my fault you were talking to yourself, Dad. Izuku hooted in contentment when Shota started running his fingers through his hair. I want to keep an eye on Ida, but I'm going to have you and Hitoshi with me. I don't know how I feel about taking you two into Hosu. Izuku nuzzled into Shota's shoulder. Be honest, Izuku muttered. Is there really a lot you need to teach me about hero work I haven't already picked up on? I have a potential solution if there isn't a lot I need to learn. Shota was silent for a few minutes. Well, there is a lot still to teach you that won't be covered during this internship. Shota finally admitted. I will most likely be spending the week going into detail about patrols with Toshi, so it will be mostly revealed for you. Izuku nodded. In that case, I can take the disguise and keep watch over Ida. I'll let you know if he does something stupid. I won't engage unless necessary. Izuku glanced up at Shota's face. How does that sound? You can take Toshi to Hosut and teach him all about how patrols work, and I'll keep watch. If you need it, he'll be there. Izuku could see the way Shota was weighing the options, so he decided to add another push. Plus, I can always keep an eye out for Stain himself. If I see him, I can let you know, and we can track him down. I don't have to engage, I can just track. Shota ruffled his hair and pushed him aside. Go back to Toshi. I'll think about Hosu. Hitoshi was standing off to the side of Shoto as they waited for the entire class to gather at the train station. Shoto was annoyed that the only five years that sent him an internship request was his dad, but he wasn't too upset about it. Honestly, the two of them were mostly upset about having to be apart for the full week that the internships would last. With the intensity of the internship and the different schedules of Limelight versus Underground, neither Shota nor Endeavor were likely to let the two boys have any personal time together. Meanwhile, Izuku and Denki were having a similar goodbye. They'd only been dating for a few days, but Izuku had been really enjoying it so far. He wasn't sure exactly what it was, but Denki just made him feel... different? Like, he really liked it when Denki kissed his cheek, and when they held hands, and he liked to nuzzle into Denki's side, but... Well, he did that with the rest of his family too. But it felt... different... with Denki. And Izuku really liked the way it felt. And now... He was going to have to separate for a week since Papa was going to be spending the week doing a very intense training regiment with Denki and Izuku was going to be in Hosu with Toshi and Shota doing a heavy patrol in the city. Zuzu, Denki said as he toyed with one of Izuku's curls. Promise me you'll be safe? Izuku nodded. I'm mostly going to be just the eyes in the sky, Izuku promised. I'll only engage if someone's life is in direct danger. Okay, I mean, I finally got myself a boyfriend. I really don't want to lose you already. Denki said with a wink. Izuku took Denki's hands in his and nuzzled it against his cheek while blushing. Same here. I really like this, what we have right now. And don't worry, I was a vigilante for years. I know how to stay safe. Denki snorted. You know staying safe is the exact opposite of vigilantism, right? You sound like Shota. Izuku giggled. I swear, Denki, I'll be back in one piece at the end of this week. But you have to promise me you won't let yourself get distracted worrying about me. And learn everything Zashi has to teach you, okay? I promise, Zuzu. I'll have a lot more control over my quirk when I get back home. Oh, there's this wrong com that just came out. When internships are over, let's go catch a movie together. And maybe dinner afterwards? Izuku nodded. Yeah, I'd like that. Once everyone had arrived at the station, Shota made sure everyone had their costume cases, were told to be on their best behaviors, and then told they would have a month of detention if you heard they were less than perfect while with their mentors. After Shota was sure everyone knew he was serious, he made sure Hitoshi, Izuku and Ida followed him through the train to Hosu. Denki didn't get on a train. He didn't need to. 
Mike Sensei said the facilities at his agency would be the best if he was working with a sound or voice based quirk, but as Nicky's quirk wasn't sound or voice based, they would be working primarily at the UA facilities. Nicky was sure that Izu would never see him wrong, so he was trusting that Mike Sensei really was the best person to go to. And that his suggestion wasn't just because Mike Sensei was a second dad. And man, what a trip that was to find out. He had known that Aizawa Sensei was the hero he was living with, and that Hitoshi was his brother, so by default, that Aizawa Sensei was Hitoshi's dad, but never in a million years would Denki have ever thought that Mike Sensei was married to Aizawa Sensei. But it kinda sorta made sense. Kaminari, glad you made it! Mike Sensei called out to him, startling Denki out of the sorts. I really get you picked me, honestly. I know there were a lot of other heroes you could have chosen, and I'm sure you had your reservations, but I'm sure we can get you to a good place by the time the week is up. I hope so too. Izu kept saying nothing but good things about you, and that I learned a lot from you. Denki grinned at Max Sensei. You've got a lot to live up to, Max Sensei. Yeah! Let's get this party started! Max Sensei gestured for Denki to follow him, and they reached one of the gyms. Max Sensei brought Denki to what looked like a battery hookup. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is this. Why are you obsessed with how many volts you can produce? Well, more volts equal more power, right? Denki answered hesitantly. That's what my core counselor said anyways. Max Sensei pinched the bridge of his nose in a manner very similar to Aizawa Sensei, and Denki wasn't sure who got the habit from who. So, I need to get Nezu to investigate a quirk counselor for incompetence, huh? Okay, he muttered. Louder, he said. No, bolts are going to be pretty useless to you. They don't actually measure power, but rather the difference in charge that converts electrical energy to move from one place to another. Basically, it's a measure of how far electricity can go, as well as its likelihood to arc, as you are not a power line, and arcing is generally a bad thing for you, as it sends your electricity into the ground, where it is essentially wasted, you don't need to have a particularly high voltage, you would actually benefit from having a far lower one. Denki's eyes were as wide as saucers. That's totally not what I've been taught. Yeah, that seems a bit obvious now, Max Sensei winced. I'm going to be giving you a few books on electricity that I want you to read, but you can do that after training is done for the day. Think of it as a bit of supplemental reading for what we're going to be going over this week. Denki nodded, not quite happy about having to do some extra reading, but okay with it if it'll help him be a better hero. Okay, now continuing with the problem of how many volts you use, the 1 million volts you use in your indiscriminate shock is overkill. Like, most power outlets use 240, and some countries even have that as too high of an arcing risk and use 120 volts as the standards. And have you ever seen what an average power line can do to a person? Spoiler, it's not pretty. So do us all a favor, don't use that million plus voltage thing again, ya dick? Yeah, Denki whispered. Um, should I be writing this all down? Nah, it'll all be in the books I give you, with a lot more detail. Makes sense you put a hand on Denki's head. One of the main things I want to work on with you this week is minimizing your arcing. Yes, it looks super flashy, the media will love it, and you will be a walking fire hazard. Please, please, please do not become a walking fire hazard. The only time I want to see you arcing is when you are just about to touch something with your new grass. It won't look as cool, but it will be so much safer to other people, and it will reduce the casualties and potential property damage. So promise me, yeah, you're going to lower your voltage, and no more of this indiscriminate shock nonsense. Uh, yeah. Then he rubbed the back of his neck. Izo already told me to stop using it because it made me short circuit too much, so don't worry about that one. Good. Max Sensei scratched at his nose for a second trying to figure out how to phrase the next part. While well, volts are practically useless for you, what you do need to practice with is your amperage, as that's the measure of the amount of electrical energy being moved at any one time. It is, in essence, the thing that makes electricity so dangerous. It's what you will need to learn to control so as to effectively incapacitate your opponents without killing them. You want to keep your amperage fairly low, as you want to be a taser and not an electric chair. Makes sense to give him a sad smile. While you will inevitably lose control at some point in your career and kill someone, I really don't want it to be while you're still a student. You have a really strong quirk, and those of us with strong quirks have to keep this in mind. Accidents happen. So, keep to the lowest power setting you can manage, and gradually increase your power if it's really needed. Denki's eyes set up with understanding. I really don't want to kill anyone. No one does, Kaminari. Max Sensei said calmly. But with a quirk as powerful as yours, it's an inevitability... Hopefully not for many years, and learning this control now will keep that inevitability at bay for a long time. Max Sensei looked at him with understanding. Did you know I'm nearly completely deaf? 
he asked. Denki looked at him with confusion, not understanding the topic change, but rolling with it nonetheless. No. Mike Sensei nodded and shifted his headphones. Yeah, I have hearing aids that are covered up by my headphones. My quack is really powerful, and my body doesn't have any natural protection from the sheer volume I can produce. Sensors are really freaking powerful and super dangerous. I'm sure you heard about what Izuku did to the Noma at the USJ, right? Denki nodded. While he had been short-circuited for the latter half of the ordeal and didn't actually see what he did, he had been told all about it by Mina, who had watched it all go down. Sunways, I can do that too, but I hurt myself and anyone who happens to be in the area, so I developed other techniques that are just as effective, but a lot safer, while using that overwhelmingly powerful attack as a last-ditch move. If I used it all the time, I'd have a massive casualty count and my property damage would be in the billions. Max Sensei continued. Electricity, also, is stupidly freaking dangerous, Kaminari. There are so many things that can go wrong with attacking someone with an electrical attack that you might want to think about if you want to attack directly at all or just use it as a backup. A last stitch move, if you will. I've seen it charging cell phones by sticking the charging cable in your mouth. You could do something similar with support gear. Having a weapon that is useless in the hands of anyone else, but you could use the electricity to power it. Now, I'm not saying that using support gear is inherently better than attacking physically. They both have their pros and cons. But it is a choice that I feel you should seriously consider. This is especially important due to how much training you wasted trying to be a Pikachu and keeping a constant 240 volts at 30 to 50 amps in order to power support items. It's far easier to learn and execute than constantly adjusting your amperage while also keeping track of where you are striking so that you don't kill or permanently cripple your opponent. Mike Sensei paused, thinking, and then added on. Though, on the other hand, support items can break and that could be really bad in the middle of a fight, but that's why I'm going to make sure you can use a quick safely, so if you decide to go the route of support gear, you'll be able to continue fighting if your gear breaks. Mike Sensei clapped his hands. So, are you ready for some hands-on stuff now? Dinky grinned brightly and nodded. He was really freaking glad he listened to Izuku and ran the present Mike. This man knew what he was talking about. This chapter was such a good chapter. Like, Denki finally got explained his quirk in a way that makes sense to him. But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed chapter 20 of Screech. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!